heard some wonderful ways of getting to the top. I want you to picture yourself being that person at the top of the mountain. And I want you to think about that mountain, mountain being your educational journey, and at the top, that's your career success. That's your career success. Y'all got that? So take a look at that picture, everybody, and really just picture yourself floating. It is so important from the beginning of a journey to know the end. Once again, you should know your end at the beginning. There's a book called Seven Effective Habits. Seven, uh, um, Seven Effective Habits. There's one for teens. I want you to work on getting that by Kobe. Okay, Stephen Coven, I believe. And uh, you all need to get that as teens. Okay? Because it talks about knowing your end in the beginning. So I will proceed. Oh, and one other thing. That mountain was not an obstacle for that rock climb. Challenge is not an obstacle for you. That mountain for that rock climber was an opportunity. Okay? College and moving forward with your educational journey, that's your opportunity for success. And we're going to think about the top being success, you achieving your goals. So I'm going to let you know what I think are the five things that you need in order to get to the top. Now for me, I needed to know these things because when I was about your age, I was told that I would never go to college and amount to anything. And I was told that by my counselors, and I was told that by my very own family members. You see, my mom was a single parent, and she was uneducated. But one day she told me to go to the counselor's office, you're gonna go to college, go get a college catalog. And when I went to the office, my counselor unfortunately didn't see the potential. She did not give me a catalog. Okay? My mom had seven sisters. They're living a wonderful life, they are. But she's a struggling single parent with three kids. And one day I was standing next to her. I think I probably was about 11 or 12 then. And she said, Do you think going to go to college one day? My daughter's going to go to college. And they looked at her and they laughed. And they said to her, this is a nappy head girl going nowhere. This is hilarious. They laughed at her, I remember that moment. And something inside of me just went, ooh, you know, I just got rattled, rattled up. My mom, she didn't say anything to me. She didn't say, she didn't defend her, her, she didn't say anything to them at that moment. But something triggered inside of her. And from that point on, she started on a journey <clears throat> with me, okay? So she set a goal. That's the first thing you need to do to get to the top. You need to set a goal. What does a goal look like? What is a, what is a goal? So your goal will be, let's, let's talk about this person at the top. What would that goal be? To get to the top. To get to the top of what? The mountain. To do what? What you would call success? How would we make that into a goal? How would that be worded as a goal? How can we put this mountain climber's purpose into a goal? So it would be something like this. I will stand on the top of the mountain. I will stand on the top of that mountain mountain. Okay? That's a goal. Was that achievable? Was that obtainable for this person? <laughs> Might have been not for the average person. But this person said, I will stand at the top of that mountain. Okay? So the person could see they had a vision. They could see the mountain. They could see college right there. They decided where they want to go, and they could see the end. I will stand at the top. So when 
you set your goal, the next thing you need to do is plan. So what my mom did, she went to a little campus in Shreveport, Louisiana with me. And by the way, I was the shyest girl in school. I don't think I said five words from kindergarten all the way up to 12th grade, literally. And, and, and you know, being in a small community, I know you can relate how you go from elementary to kindergarten with the same group, because I grew up in Mosier. In the same same group. So from kindergarten, I was a shy girl all the way up to 12th grade. They defined me as a shy girl that wouldn't succeed. That was my label that somebody else gave me. I couldn't break it for some reason. So I just stayed the shy girl that wouldn't succeed all the way up until that point. But my mom, with her uneducated self, saw something different. She walked on a campus. That campus is called Southern University at Shreveport. Louisiana, Sussler. You know what that is? She walked on that campus. And she went inside. And all this time I was pretty much being what I call rejected. By friends. By, you know, I didn't have a lot of friends because I was a shy girl. So I always was the one sitting on the side of the room quiet, looking like I didn't want to be involved, but inside I wanted to. I just didn't know how. But when she came back out, she had a piece of paper in her hand. And I was sitting in the car. She handed it to me. And I had never seen some university in Shreveport, by the way. I really hadn't. I didn't have upward bound opportunities. At least I wasn't aware. OK? And so she handed me a piece of paper. And that paper, piece of paper said, you are accepted. That's all I read on that paper. Southern University, it was Southwell at the time. Dear Tuesday, you are accepted. For the first time in life, I felt the sense of acceptance. Somebody accepted me. And it was Southern University at Shreveport, Louisiana. And from that day forward, I set a plan. So you have to have a goal and you have to have a plan, knowing what your end looks like. So I got excited, I set a plan. I knew I wanted to do something with psychology, help, I just only knew about psychology, but I really wanted to help others make quality choices in life, which is ironically what the Lord placed me to do. So I knew that was my goal, but I just knew psychology, so that was going to be my major. I wanted to help young people like me come out of their shell and know that they could have the confidence with, within to succeed. That's what I wanted to do in life. So I set the plan as two. Three, you have to be motivated. So when I walked on that campus, there's a big, a big red statue. You'll see it sometimes when you walk by that statue. It, it represents um, perseverance and endurance for our first time students. It's called Big Red. When you get a chance, take a picture by it. I walked the first day on the campus. <laughs> I walked past that statue. And from that day, boy, my life was changed. I was determined to succeed no matter what. I started reading books on motivation. I started listening to songs. I pulled out scripture that I could stand by, stand on rather. And I started motivating myself every day. And I test myself. I stepped over to a new person and said, hey, my name is Tina, what's your name? What school are you from? And I met a friend. Met the next person, the shyest girl. And I said to myself, okay, nobody knows that I'm the shyest girl in school that wouldn't succeed at this place. This brand new. <laughs> I can set a brand new person in place here. Someone that loves themselves, someone that's motivated, and someone that will not listen to the outside sources that say they would not succeed. And I started meeting people, engaging, participating in clubs and organizations, yearbook staff, things that I never thought I could do. I wasn't in any clubs or organizations in high school. I was too shy. I started getting involved in everything. And I ran across teachers, individuals such as uh, Miss Betty Favier, for example, people that told me that I can do it. Oh, 
Keep trying. Try it again. You can make it. You can succeed. Whatever you put your mind to. I start putting myself around people that motivate me. Students that were motivated. That's who I hung with around. They were straight A students in high school. They were the hit people in high school. I started getting with them. They didn't know who I was. Okay? And I was, I was able to motivate myself. So motivation. Then you have to equip yourself. So I mentioned that I was involved in clubs and organizations. That was uh, me preparing myself, equipping myself. This program is a preparation. So you come in with your tools. Just like that mountain climber, they have to have tools in order to make it up to the top. There are certain things that they need to help them stay or uh, holding, holding on to their goal or attached to their goal around. Okay? So when you get in college, you have to equip yourself with experiences. You have to go to study hall, get study groups. You have to learn test taking skills. Uh, study habits have to change. Commitment has to change. You have to equip yourself. And then also like this mountain climber, there are times when you're going to hit a rock and it's going to be loose and guess what it's going to do? It's going to fall and you might lose your balance. You might get a little scared and want to stop and go back down. You might be in the middle of the mountain hanging and try to, hanging to, try to figure out how to get back attached to the mountain to keep going. Don't give up. So for me, that next step is overcoming obstacles. You have to be willing to overcome obstacles. They are going to come your way, okay? While you're in college seniors, they are going to come your way. You're not gonna be able to get the class that you wanted. You're gonna have a very difficult instructor that doesn't appear to have your best interest in mind. They're gonna tell you, I got mine, you get yours. All I care about. You're going to experience that. You're going to have friends that, you're going to have your social issues, okay, here and there, but you have to know how to get over obstacles. How do you do that? Does anybody know how to get over an obstacle? Pray. Okay, that's your method. How do you do that? Anybody else? Persevere. So basically, just like with praying, you have to have a method to overcome your obstacles. And that's a part of your preparation. Okay? And then to get to the top, needless to say, you have to have a winning attitude. How do you get a winning attitude? You hang around people with winning attitude. You hang around, you get your mentor. You do your internships around people who are where you want to be. Okay, you stay involved, you stay connected, you don't give up. You make sure that you hang around individuals who have a uh, perseverance, a level of perseverance that will take you to the next level. But most of all, you have to do it for yourself. Okay? So how do you get to the top of that educational journey? Everything that you say is gonna need to get to the top. But most of all, that mountain, you have to understand, is your opportunity, not your obstacle. So can you say my mountain? My mountain is my opportunity. Is my opportunity. And not my obstacle. And not my obstacle. College, College is a, is a opportunity, opportunity and not and not an obstacle. An obstacle. So set your goals. Know your end in the beginning. Plan. Plan. Don't let anything hold you back from achieving your goal overall. Okay, so ultimately what happened to me is I went on and graduated. Received my bachelor's degree. I continued to persevere in my career choice because I wanted to once again serve others. I got involved in all kinds of community service. My career was strictly focused on things and ways that I could serve others. I didn't look at anything else. I was able to go on and get my master's degree. Not only did I do that, but my seven aunts that said no to my mom's face who's no longer with me, unfortunately. I helped every single one of them get back in school. 
All of my seven aunts have either an associate degree and or a bachelor's, and I have one that's finishing up her doctoral degree now. The same ones that told me that I couldn't are now saying, my niece, my niece, my niece. You see what I'm saying? So people won't see the vision for you. You have to see it for yourself. All right? And I'm going to close with that, seniors. I'm going to wish you the best in your educational opportunities, your journey. Once again, always remember when things um, hit you that might hold you back, remember that that is not an obstacle. That is an opportunity. So you turn it into an opportunity to help you to succeed so that you can get to the top. Thank you, Uncle Val Naganish and our seniors. I see you. And I will be there with you at the time.